Hey, I'm Joel. I'm going to show you how to make a lead trancey arpeggio sort of sound in Roland Xenology Pro. I have made a video on this in the past, but somebody asked me to do one with the super saw instead of just the regular saw um, or different variations of it. So I've made this video. It's pretty similar. Uh, I hope you can learn something new about Xenology Pro. Okay, the first thing we're going to do in Xenology is make sure we have initial tone selected here. So hit the wave browser, uh, the bank wave browser there. Make sure user selected on the left, all on the right, and hit initial tone here. And then once we've programmed in our MIDI clip, in this case in Ableton Live, it's going to sound like this. So we're going to use the super saw. So if you've got oscillator selected here, we go super saw, and then now it's going to sound like this. And we can change the d amount of detune, and you get a visual representation of it here, which is nice. We're just going to keep changing this as we go, suiting to taste. And I'm going to turn the wave gain up as well by 6 decibels. There we go. So now we're going to turn mono on, so only one note can be played at a time. And we're going to apply a filter to it and a filter envelope here. So we're going to bring the cutoff down and we're going to select the Moog filter. And we'll bring the cutoff down to about the 500 mark. And now when we change the master cutoff up here, it's going to control that. We're not going to get a visual representation of it, uh, but when we move this... Now we're going to add some envelope to it, so we're going to go to the envelope section here, bring one of the nodes out and bring one of them up, and then when we bring the envelope depth up here, it's going to send the signal to this, um, cut, uh, this envelope here. So a nice short cutoff, maybe around 38 there, and we can adju adjust this as we go to taste. I'm going to bring the release out a little bit as well. I don't think it really does much, but... And now when we change the master cutoff... So now that we've done that, we can go back into oscillator and bring the wave gain up a little bit more, maybe 0 dB. Just watch the master here, make sure it's not peaking. There we go, that's sounding cool. So now if we change the super saw detune amount. We can get the sound that we want. So I'll just bring that up to 12 o'clock there. Okay, so now we can do a couple of different things here. If we go into Pro Edit, uh, we go to Filter. Uh, we can have the cutoff frequency follow the keys. So if you want the higher notes to be a little bit more open in the filter and the lower notes to be more closed, we can bring this amount up here and I'll play it as, as, as I change the setting. So the, the higher notes are more open when they play and the lower notes are more closed. If that's the direction you want to take, otherwise you could change the cutoff velocity sensitivity. So right now in our MIDI clip here, all the velocities are set to the same. But if we were to just quickly go in here and have the lower notes a little bit lower in velocity, and as they come up the um, keyboard, we can change the velocity. So now well, let's have these really high notes open. So by default, it's going to send the amplitude envelope, uh, the amplitude, so the volume, to the velocity. So we can, if we click in Pro Edit mode here, if we click Amp, we can go to Velocity Sensitivity and turn that down. So the volume is going to stay the same. And then if we go back to Filter here and we bring the cutoff velocity sensitivity up, as the velocity increases on each note, the cutoff is going to increase on each note.
we essentially just emulated the same thing with the um, pitch. So we, we, before that first example, we were using the key follow to change the cutoff, but now we're using the velocity sensitivity. So if you want certain notes accented and certain notes a little bit quieter, using the velocity sensitivity would be the way to go. But if you just want the higher notes to be more open on the filter, then you would just go into, you would just change the key follow cutoff and have the velocity sensitive at sensitivity at zero. But if we want to choose certain notes based on their velocity to open the filter, we would do it this way. There you go, that's sounding pretty cool. What else can we do? We can go back to visual edit mode here. Actually, no, let's go back to pro. And what we'll do is we'll go utility, copy, tone partial one, utility, paste, tone partial two. So now we have two tone partials playing the same, exactly the same thing. So just partial one. And then just partial two. Notice it's just peaking up here. So we'll just bring the master volume down. Now we'll have them both playing together. It's just going to be louder. But what we'll do is we'll go into pitch here, and then on the second partial, we'll change the course tuning up by an octave. And if we apply a small amount of fine tune here, um, the second partial will be slightly out of tune, slightly detuned to the first partial. First partial. But as you move up, obviously, it doesn't sound so great. So just a little bit's cool. Uh, then we can go back into the oscillator here. We can change maybe the saw detuning, so make the higher pitched um, partial much more out of tune. Just bringing that down. That's cool. Or we could just change the second partial to a totally different wave form. A little bit more computer gamey, but if we just go back into pitch and bring that down an octave. So the second partial there by itself. And the first partial by itself. So I'm going to keep that sort of video gamey sound here, but if we go back into oscillator, we can change some of the settings here. What I'll do though is I'll change the pulse width. I'll bring the fat back to 60, uh, 64, which is neutral, and then change the pulse width. What we can do is we can send the pulse width, modu pulse width modulation depth to LFO2, so we can change this amount based on LFO2. And then we'll go to LFO on the second partial, make sure LFO2 is selected. We'll bring the rate right down. We'll change it to a sine wave. You can hear that's changing based on the LFO. Uh, yeah, we can sync it to tempo if we want it. So over the course of one bar, for instance, it's going to go all the way up, down, and back. And then listening to them together. And we can change the pitch if we want. Or down an octave, maybe. And if we hit amp EQ here, we can mix them based on this level control. Yeah, that's cool. Let's say we want to add some stereo width to it now, so we can go to master effects here, down the bottom we could, let's try a chorus. Just play around with the settings, something that sounds cool. So slightly increase the pre-delay, we could sync it to the tempo, so over the course of one bar. So without that, it's like right in the center. Or we can add the chorus on. Let's 
going to change the whole thing up an octave, see how it sounds. Or maybe just have these bottom notes down an octave. But I'll just leave it all at the same octave, Command Z, Command Z. Cool, now we can add a delay if we want it on there. We'll turn ping pong on, we'll change the mode to fade, and then we'll um, we'll separate the left from the right, and we'll have the left on um, third notes, and then quarter notes. We'll just bring the feedback down, the dry wet down, and we'll change the filter setting here, so the delay, actually we'll turn it all dry wet all the way up, so we'll just listen to the delay. feedback down and now we'll bring the dry sound back in nice then we can add an EQ let's add an EQ 8 and we'll just bring out some of those lows about 60 hertz 200 hertz we'll bring right out and then yeah you just change around play around with the settings here That's cool there. Now if we play around with the master cutoff here. Cool, it's sounding pretty fat. What we can do now is in our plugin down the bottom here, if we hit configure and then we move the master cutoff here, it's going to add it down here. So now we'll just close that. If we right click, show automation, now we can automate that uh, the filter to open up and then we'll have it closed down here. And if we hold alt, we can bend the curve. Uh, we can make a curve by bending the line and then let's listen to that now and then there's some yummy tasty drums here just a kick and a bass uh, don't forget to save your sound as well by hitting here hit right and then hit right initial tone there and you'll see down the bottom here we can name it um, trance up lead two two okay for whatever reason it's not saving the two there don't know why but there you go all right that's how you make a trance leads arpeggio synth sound in roland xenology pro software synth thanks for watching